Hello everyone, this is Jake Pimentel here from Pime Technology. As many of you know, yesterday was the official release date of the new iPhone 12 Pro. And one of the big new things with the iPhone 12 Pro is that it does have 5G capability. As somebody who has a lot of interest in the cellular networks, I want to go ahead and test out Verizon's 5G ultra wideband. I live near Providence, Rhode Island. Specifically, I'm going to be going to and around Brown University as there are a lot of 5G nodes over there. But without further ado, let's go ahead and test 5G ultra wideband from Verizon on the iPhone 12 Pro. First, I want to go over a little bit about what 5G is. 5G is the next generation of network technology. Some of the huge benefits of 5G over 4G LTE networks is that they allow for lower latency, improved capacity, as well as the ability to use more radio waves on the network, also known as spectrum. This picture right here is an example of the 5G nodes that Verizon has in Providence, Rhode Island. These in specific are Samsung nodes. So Samsung is the official vendor for Verizon in the Northeast. They will look similar in other areas. They just may look a little physically different because they're made by different vendors. But overall, you'll see them on telephone poles like this one in this picture. And you may also see them on regular cell towers as well. The first place that I did my testing was actually in the parking garage, believe it or not. At first, I didn't really think you'd be able to get 5G ultra wideband in parking garages as they're made out of concrete, but it just so happens that I parked near a 5G node that was right, um, right near the Providence Place Mall in the parking garage. So I was pretty impressed with the speeds. I really didn't think I'd be able to get any sort of 5G speed in there whatsoever, but I got 1,892 megabits down and then about 109 megabits upload, which is excellent. Before we move on to our next location, I just want to quickly say, please wear a mask when you're out in public and near other people. Wearing a mask can go a long way in helping protect not only yourself, but also other people from the coronavirus. Furthermore, Providence and New England is absolutely beautiful during the fall. It's one of the reasons I love living up here. You get a mix of all the seasons, and fall is my favorite. You have the leaves that are changing colors. You have the crisp air, and I also love seeing all the Halloween decorations. It's just my favorite time of the year. Let me know which time of the year is your favorites in the comments down below. Next, I went around the Brown University neighborhoods that surround it. And what I found is that the 5G ultra wideband was pretty built out. Um, there were some areas where I did drop to LTE, which I'll go more into that in a couple seconds here. But overall, these speeds were very fast. I'm not seeing over the two gigabits per second, which some people were seeing in other cities. But I think that's coming very soon here. They just haven't released it just yet in my market. But Overall, the speeds were great. I was seeing downloads over 1500 megabits per second, which is which is more than most people are gonna need at this moment. And like I said earlier, there were some areas in the neighborhoods where I would drop down to LTE service. I mean, it's just kind of how it is with these signal frequencies being so high at the millimeter wave level. There are gonna be times and places where you do drop off the 5G signal. It's, it's actually you know pretty common to see the 5G drop off once you're further away from the node but even when I did drop to LTE the speeds were respectable I saw anywhere from 30 megabits per second all the way up to 150 200 megabits per second on LTE some rumors that have been spreading around online I know I've seen some stuff on reddit and on social media saying that 5G millimeter wave Verizon's 5G ultra wideband does not go through trees or foliage or anything like that. And I can say from experience that that is not true. 5G ultra wideband or millimeter wave does go through trees. You can kind of see here I was in between a couple of trees and there were some leaves in the way and I was still getting fantastic speeds over one gigabits per second. I also was indoors for a little bit at a Starbucks and I actually did have a 5G ultra wideband connection near one of the windows. So I think it's kind of a myth that 5G does not go through trees or foliage or stuff like that. But if you are deep indoors, like inside of a big building, you're probably not gonna get 5G ultra wideband just yet. 
My next stop was Shake Shack. Shack. Shake Shack has some of the best food that I've ever had. Turns out that near my local Shake Shack as well, I also do get 5G ultra wideband. There was a node not too far. You can probably see it in the background right there. So yeah, overall the speeds were great near Shake Shack. I got anywhere between one gigabits per second and two gigabits per second. So as you can see in this video, it ended at 1,799 megabits per second down and then 119 megabits per second upload, which is very, very good for a wireless connection. I also did step inside the restaurant really quickly, and I also did get 5G ultra wideband, so it was able to go through the windows in the front of the restaurant there, but overall, I'm pretty impressed with the 5G ultra wideband speeds near my local Shake Shack. Next, I did a test without having line of sight of a node, so basically I could not see where the node was from where I was sitting. And the results speak for themselves. They were definitely worse. I was getting anywhere from 500 to 800 megabits per second instead of one gigabits per second or more. But this is still really, really good considering that I wasn't line of sight from the node. And in general, 500 megabits is perfectly enough for streaming YouTube or watching Netflix or whatever you're doing on that connection, you should be good to go. Of course, a new phone isn't without its issues and I did run into a problem with the phone at one point. I was doing a speed test and I noticed it was kind of all over the place and then I just lost signal. I had no signal bars, but it said 5G ultra wideband. I then scrolled down from the control center and then it said no service 5G UW. So I'm not sure exactly what was happening there. I couldn't use anything else on the phone at that point. All the apps were frozen. I could not lock it. I could not power it down. It was just completely bricked. I had to do a hard reset and up and down on the volume and then the power. And after that, it was perfectly fine. And I didn't actually run into that issue again after this entire day of testing. So I think it's just a small software bug that I hope Apple, and I'm sure they will, roll out an update for very soon. And to end this video off, I'm sure you all are wondering what battery did I have left after doing testing? So after doing testing, I went from 91% at the beginning all the way down to about 30%. So I did use a lot of battery. Millimeter Wave is the type of 5G that will hurt your battery life. I will say that I still did get three hours of screen on time, which is really good for a phone that is this small. So definitely, take note that you will see a little bit decreased battery life when you're on 5G ultra wideband, especially when you're live testing it like I did. All right, everybody, I am now back in my car. I feel like overall that was a successful testing of Verizon's ultra wideband millimeter wave 5G. Um, I think the iPhone did really well. I, I found the performance on the iPhone to be pretty good besides the couple of glitches that I mentioned in this video that I hope Apple will sort out through a future software update. Um, but overall, this was a pretty successful testing. Um, I was in the Brown University area near Providence. There are some other areas of Providence that also have millimeter wave. I know there's like the Silver Lake area, some parts near Cranston, but I mostly just stayed in the Brown University area and I was connected most of the time to 5G millimeter wave. They are also adding some new nodes as we could see there. But overall, I'm very impressed and I think 5G millimeter wave definitely is the future of 5G and I look forward to seeing more expansion of it. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like down below. Also be sure to comment down below what you think about uh, Verizon's 5G ultra wideband. Um, also, let me know um, if you've seen it in your area, if you've tested it out, and what kind of speeds that you've got on it. Um, but overall, I hope to be doing more videos soon. Hope you guys have a great day. Smile because you and technology are amazing. And peace. Out.